Welcome to The Advocates on PLUS TV Africa, your weekly reminder that important conversations are a necessary tool for, Sena, for a Sena society. On Friday, Nigeria turned 61, and in view of this, we examine a quote by the 32nd President of the United States, Franklin Roosevelt, which says, True individual freedom cannot exist without economic security and independence. People who are hungry and out of a job are the stuff of which dictatorships are made of. So my advocacy today is on the need and importance of Nigerians rising to serve and save the country. Felix talks about human capital development in the context of the wealth of a nation. Raymond is talking about the hopes of Nigeria with the arrival of its new age. And finally, Omoni wraps the conversation with his thoughts on another independence. As always, your panelists are here to share ideas aimed at provoking thoughts with no holds barred. Stay with us. Arising to serve and save Nigeria. While growing up, my friends and I looked forward to participating excitedly during the recitation of the Nigerian National Pledge. The National Pledge is just a sixth sentence that carries in it the whole resources, wisdom, and the exact things we must do to change the fate of our nation, Nigeria. I must say, I didn't really appreciate the deep meaning of the words and lines that made up the whole anthem. But somehow, I remember very well how reciting the anthem bonded everyone together, irrespective of background, tribe, ethnicity, or even social class. The first line talks about faithfulness, loyalty, and honesty. But today, how many of us Nigerians can truly boast about their commitment to the application of the words, not just at individual levels, but as a tool for national development? For over six decades, we have had a generation of leaders who have, who have complete disrespect for the foundation upon which we should build one of the most enviable and prosperous nations in the world. And sometimes I wonder, how exactly do they sleep well at night? With our overwhelming population, Nigeria, Nigerians have one of the most sophisticated minds on earth. We are globally recognized for the innovations and changes we lead around the world and across industries, including health, technology, finance, engineering, entrepreneurship, agriculture, etc. Today, how many of these Nigerians living in Nigeria or elsewhere are serving Nigeria with all their strengths. With our abundance of resources, the least Nigeria should have is an environment that inspires its people to serve using their strengths and capacities. Unfortunately, with the corruption-infested leadership system, citizens are forced to live to other nations or serve them themselves at all costs because people who should have made the environment conducive for service are ignorant heartless and incompetent fellows who had no business being in the positions of authority in the first place. The system seems to me it was designed to drain the citizens' dreams and frustrate the people. The mind of an average Nigerian, especially the youth, is filled with junk and it is difficult for the mind to return to its original state once it has been stretched in a given direction. In this case, in what direction is the majority stretching their minds? Your guess is as good as mine. How sincere are we defending our unity, which is one of the facets of our anthem? As the, first, as the very first factor that is supposed to bind us together before we can think of deploying and achieving big results at an individual and national level, we have failed to understand that nothing great has ever been achieved by a people so divided. What do we do? First, we need to go back and pick up our towers at the very spot we had our bats. Nigeria is 61 years, and I can boldly tell you that the majority of our youth don't even know the history of Nigeria as a nation. Quite unfortunate, we had to feed and grow with the crumbs that we were provided by fellow Nigerians, our leaders, who thrive on the calamity of the nation. But young people must arise and obey the call to make Nigeria take her place among the Committee of Nations. Nigeria must arise to serve and save Nigeria. We must respect our diversity and embrace our uniqueness. And in the end, we just have a little thing that divides us and much more that connects us as a people. God bless Nigeria at 61. So, 
um, that's really my thoughts. I don't know what you think about um, this. Well, quite interesting, Raymond. Um, you know, it's one thing I admire about you is your outspokenness, communicating your thoughts, especially with the environment, with respect to the environment. But uh, on the second thoughts, I agree with quite everything you said, except one thing. Defining an average Nigerian, there is no specific generic term to define an average Nigerian. In clear terms, who is a Nigerian? Can you define Nigeria? A Nigerian is an individual that believes in the coexistence of other Nigerians in this particular geographic region. But the Nigeria in question is not just a geographical location, it's a group of neighbors around you. So everybody has to be responsible for themselves, how they need to build themselves intellectually in terms of building up their capacity to give something back to the society. In this case, the other neighbors around you. So the, the key words here, Nigerian and Nigerians. Nigerian is the individual. Nigeria is the group of persons around you, not necessarily a geographical location within the West African region. And the average Nigerian mindset is not filled with junk in the sense that it depends on you. It's garbage in, garbage out. Some persons actually may do something very bad because that's what, unfortunately, every system has both good and bad people. So people should not see Nigerians as bad people. Oh, uh, we got some, um, um, some persons that were involved in fraud. Therefore, Nigerians are fraudulent. No, we got some bad people. Therefore, they are bad. No, everybody should be responsible for their own way with respect to other people, giving back to society. So what do you... Let's see, I want to say something. Okay, so where, let me also come to a point of uh, a little disagreement. I think we've blamed leadership for too long, yeah. right? And I've come to a phase in life, a phase of taking responsibility. And part of what I want to ask us to begin to do is to take responsibility. So I was having a conversation with someone some time ago and he asked, where do the leaders come from? Mm. The leaders are from you and me. And a lot of times, people like us, when we get into leadership positions, we actually change. Now, I think uh, part of the issue is that for so long, everybody has had an individu individualistic agenda. Yeah. So, who cares about the common good? Well, you, are, you will say the leaders should be caring about the common good. But it is unfortunate that the people following are failed to care about the common good. So, if our leaders are not taking us forward, then let us, the followers, begin to take us forward. How do we, and how do we do that? Look at all facets of our uh, nation, public sector, private sector, where you have a lot of headaches. Is it the leaders that are there? No. People like you and I. So if everybody begins to do something right, decides to do something right, at a stage, the leaders that we have would not have any choice but to conform. You know, you know basically why, I, why that actually came up, if you look at um, when I was actually speaking my mind, when I, what I mean by average Nigerian youth is filled with junk. We find a place, there are two things you need to pick out. First is that we have people, like you said, who are actually getting involved in anything just because they are serving themselves, not because they are serving the nation. It's a different thing to, to, to get involved in an activity because it's for the good of everyone, even if you are not benefiting anything directly. And so we have a system where I talked about Nigerians living both here and the ones living elsewhere. How is it? I've been to a couple of countries where there are people, irrespective of wherever they are, they still channel the end product of their activity, their, pro, uh, their sweat, everything back home. So how many of us as Nigerians, even those of us that are allies, that are, are opportune to be here and we are talking to the world, are we really here because we are on the average, because we are, we are here because we want to you know, contribute to nation building, or maybe because we are here for the grams? Because we need to come to a time where we want to tell ourselves the truth. We need, to, we need to be very, very take responsibility because these days people are now so intelligent that we have to find other ways to navigate through the truth. So we have to find ways to cut corners. We have to start taking responsibility to serve the nation and save the nation, irrespective of what we think about it. Go out there, when we talk about the average, when we take average, Nigeria is over 200 million people. 
How many of these people that you are talking about are coming out to produce their results? When we have more bad people that are more profound, how many of the people who are doing good are bringing out the good work that they are doing without really any ulterior motive? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not like there are no good people. You know, I know, I know the work that you're doing in the social space. We know quite a lot of other young people that are doing a lot of work in the social space. But we must have a time where we are doing this because we really, really want to uh, contribute to nation building. Okay. I think Mr. Raymond is online. Uh, Mr. Raymond, do you have any thoughts to say on this about Nigerians you know, coming up to serve and save Nigeria? All right. So um, I, I quite agree with... Um, with, with the sense that has been expressed there in the studio. Uh, for me, uh, the title of your advocacy is quite, um, it's, it's, it's actually, uh, it hits the point uh, in terms of the two key issues that are before us. Uh, the first, uh, the, 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 the title says, Arising to Serve and Save Nigeria. So Arising suggests to me that yes, um, uh, so far we have not been doing what we ought to be doing. And um, if it has taken 61 days for us to do that, well, good and fine. Uh, people say that when a man wakes up, that will be his own money. So if we are choosing to that 61st years and, and from now onwards will be our money, then we should do it. We should do it. Because uh, doing that will now uh, lead to the other extreme of your title, which is saving Nigeria. We, nobody is going to save the country for us. We can all travel to Canada, travel to UK, post all kind of funny things on Twitter about Nigeria. It doesn't end the narrative because you are living as an individual. You have not left. You have not. You have not left in the real sense. A part of you is still here. Is still here. You are only living physically. But when you get there, the the whole essence of home, mm -hmm. of fatherland, of motherland, dawns on you the more. So the responsibility to save Nigeria is also ours. We have blamed leadership for why we are here. We have blamed leadership, and it has become even boring in a way, if you ask me. Yeah. We are young Nigerians. The future of this country rests on our shoulders. Yeah. We are the turning point generation. We are going to take from where our forefathers, whom we claim have failed us, are going to uh, 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 are going to retire into so responsibility is actually ours and um, I like the fact that we're having this conversation and and I quite um, imagine that many Nigerians out there also share this collective sentiment and we can only hope that um, uh, some way somehow we can begin to turn around uh, turn things around for the betterment of this great nation. All right, thank you, Mr. Raymond. Felix is next after this break.